Ashley, I gotta say. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to game number two. We on the radiant, dustbin on the dire. This is a best out of three. Dustbin on the verge of elimination, on the verge of being sent home. A trip to Seattle is the prize, not for winning this match, but for winning the qualifier. Even if We win this series, they still have a ways to go. They're gonna have to go through Aeon as well as Tong Fu. So whoever wins this series, they have a still a long road ahead of them. Another best out of three, and then potentially a best out of five. That being said, WE looks really strong, and immediately the Windrunner ban, the Queen of Pain ban, no Chan ban, no Enchantress ban. Are Dustbin really going to give away those junglers? Chan At least one of them is available now, if WE choose not to ban them. They ban out the Sand King, they want to leave the double jungle in the pool. Also, the Prophet is in the pool, and that is a hero that WE really knows how to use. They showcased it last game, or last, yesterday in their series versus, I believe, was it Ice? Who did they play? Let me double check. No, it was Myth Trust where they, they picked up that profit early, as well as a pug, a couple of other early pushing heroes, and just crushed the early game. Ten seconds. Panda is not banned out either, and I felt Panda was a big contributor. Dustbin is not adjusting Five their draft strategy at all. So this tells you that Dustbin feels it was execution rather than hero picks that really determined the outcome of that game. That being said, Invoker is available, and W did not ban him. I think we're going to see W.E. first pick the Prophet here. No, they banned the Invoker! Oh, I don't know if I like this. Ninja Boy is so strong on that Invoker. They give away Brewmaster. They can easily take a Prophet and a Chen in return if they want. It's not, it's not really Dustbin style, especially not the Chen. But if you give those two away to W.E. as well as a Brewmaster, I just, I don't know. So for Dustbin, at least one of those two I'd like to see going in their direction. For the moment, they are contemplating, and WE, we saw how powerful that Brewmaster is. They don't always play him in that situation. They sometimes will send him solo mid. He can dual lane mid Ten seconds as well. You can even try land the Brewmaster, but really all he needs are the levels. If you can get a fast Blink Dagger, a fast pair of Phase Boots, a Drum, that's great, but Brewmaster can be very effective just with his ultimate. Time. It's all about the levels for the Brewmaster. So that will be one of their three core farmers. It is Profit to start and Morphly to follow. Dustbin securing themselves that carry. And this is a deviation from WE who stole the Morphine away from Dustbin. Now Dustbin are picking up early. I like this draft already much better for Dustbin. These are two heroes that are comfortable with playing aggressive early game gankers. Uh, aggressive, you know, uh, mid game heroes as well. Morphling giving them a bit of team fight. Excuse me, not team fit, a bit of late game potential. You couple it with the Prophet and some pushing power as well. Morphling can be a great Chill. split pusher. But they are giving away the Chen, and WWE will happily take that up. So we're going to see push and early game aggression versus ganks. It's going to be push versus ganks. At least that's the way it's looking at the moment. And WWE, are they going to continue to go with those very prototypical Chinese heroes? If they want to, Lone Druid is another option here. Pugna is an option. Although I think if you want to go with the Pugna, he'll be available later on in the draft. Enchantress is out there. And will Dustbin actually run it? They didn't have much luck last time. It's gonna be the Lone Druid, oh, WE. This 1-2-3 combo, they really crushed Myth with it yesterday. I think they had all three of these heroes on one team. I'm almost positive they had the Lone Druid and the Panda, as well as the Chen. Maybe it was a Prophet instead of the Chen. They had two of these three, and anyway, they know how to play all of these heroes. I've seen them play them all before. Panda will be the initiator, he will be that sort of mid-game teamfight presence. Uh, he's also a great pusher in his own right, not directly. He can clear out creep boys pretty well with the clap, but more importantly, the threat of that ult being dropped will drive every enemy hero back from a tower. For Dustbin, I think the goal is to spread the map. I don't think you want to take a team fight against this lineup. You don't really want to directly contest those pushes. Chen is very scary in the early stages of the game, but what you can do, if you're able to split push with the Morphling and the Prophet, they're going to get the Earthshaker as well, and that, was, that really worked out for WE. We'll probably see the Earthshaker dual laning with the Morphling. We could see the Prophet soloing. Could see him in the offlane. The lanes are very flexible for Dustbin at, the, at this time. And I like this draft better as well for that reason. They haven't picked into some supports that require a lot of farm like a Lashrac and a Sand King. Speaking of that Lashrac, he is available. As well as Shadow Demon. WE definitely need a support. I think we're going to see them take one of those two unless they get the ban here. And if you're Dustbin, I think you're perfectly happy banning both of those out. It is WE who have the first pick coming out of the stage of the draft. Ten seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Enigma ban. 
By WE? Huh. They could have run that Enigma. That's a hero they've run before. I'm a little surprised to see this ban, but if you don't want to pick it, you're not going to give it away. And Enigma is definitely a hero that Dustbin has room for. Kind of a hero they need. Gives them some team fight, gives them some early push, some early laning power. And another farmer. Uh, a hero that can farm in any situation, whether it's the jungle, the offlane, solo mid. Enigma could do it all. And if you, if you had a chance to catch that MTW versus Quantic series, which I did cast at the end of the day yesterday, they really know how to play that Enigma. Uh, you, you, we saw... Who plays it again? I think it was Funzy. Maybe Saksha. No, I think it was Funzy on that Enigma. Either way, whichever one it was, just early farming, and then once he hit level 6, he got a double kill for his team, pushing down towers left and right, really controlling the pace of the game in game number 2. And then eventually it was a 5-man black hole. Reserve time. Shadow Shaman is the pick here. Or, sorry, the ban here. Interesting ban, but it makes sense. WE already have a lot of push with the Brewmaster of the Chain. If you give away a Shadow Shaman, that gives them some more initiation, some more push, more disables, and the lockdown against a hero like Morphling, against a, a hero like Prophet, two heroes who are likely to be off on their own many uh, at many points during the mid game. Giving them that really reliable way to, to hold your hero in place can be a, a devastating opportunity. Tidehunter is the final ban. Another smart ban. I, I, I have to say I like the way Dustbin is banning a picking a bit better in this phase, of course. Tidehunter plus Brewmaster just gives you so much team fight. Uh, it, when you have the Ravage and the Panda ult up, I mean, you can't really do anything. You just have to walk back. Let them do take whatever they want, unless you have a huge advantage. So where, do this, where does W go from here? Will they go for the Pugna? They've done it before. They could do it again. They have room for that solo farm. Could be a great solo mid option. Pugna does suffer a bit from survivability issues and against the Dire lineup. It is dangerous to go for a Pugna. Can be ganked off pretty effectively. By the Prophet, the Morphling, the Earthshaker, a lot of burst damage there. The it's gonna be that Lashrac, and Shadow Demon is available as well. I think this uh, would be a good response here. Disruption is very powerful against Panda. If he blinks in, uh, a claps, and is about to drop his ultimate, you can disrupt him. Uh, you could also fissure him. Two ways to let your teammates escape. Also, you can disrupt that ally who's being initiated on, and very nice defensive option. Plus, it denies it to WE. I'm a little concerned, though, for Dustbin, because let's say they follow up this strike with the Pugna, which I just threw out there as an option. That's so much pushing power. Edict, as well as Nether Blast, as well as the Silibear, the Chen Creeps, to tank in the front lines. We could see a game that ends in 25, 30 minutes, and Dustbin may play it really well. They may have a Morphling who's 10 and 1, and he may just not have the time to get going. Prophet alone is not going to be enough to stop the push. Earthshaker, even with his Fissure, it's not going to be, he's going to be a support Earthshaker, so it's not going to be highly leveled. It's also not the most spammable anti-push spell. Twin-headed dragon, yes! Oh, I love this. I like this pick a lot. This is a fantastic anti-push hero. A very tanky support hero. Unlike, say, a Crystal Maiden, an Ancient Apparition, a Vengeful Spirit, Jakiro is very, very sturdy. He's got extremely high starting HP for an Intelligence hero. Nice base armor, and his, his strength gain is quite good. Also, crucially, he gives you that big AoE, and you're going to need every last ounce of AoE in order to slow down these pushes. Plus, he gives you the ability to push on your own. His passive is very very strong versus towers. Shadow Demon will be the final pick here. Dire team pick. For WE. I think if you're Dustbin, maybe you're almost glad they didn't opt for a Pugna, although that would give them four farmers. Yeah, I'm not sure how they could have laned it. We have seen some teams do a Pugna in the jungle, so with some smoke jungling antics, but that's not really something I expect from WE. And Shadow Demon, of course, we all know how good he is against Morphling. You can get two Morphlings of your own, uh, and those Illusions will scale with Morphling's power. If Because Morphling goes for mass stats, the Illusions will be hitting harder. Also a very nice defensive hero. Gives them that hard support they needed. So we will see a farming Lashrak, farming Silibear, and farming Panda. The question is, who will be? what will the lanes be? Most likely, it will be an off-lane Lone Druid. The Chinese generally run it that way, and they're pretty good at it. Panda in the safe lane, Lashrak farming mid, Shadow Demon supporting the Panda up top, and then Chen defensive jungle. 
Even if the Lone Druid doesn't get early farm, he doesn't really have to carry this. They've got enough, enough other heroes that can push that it can initiate to burst down the towers. He's just got to be that frontline presence. Even if the Slow Druid goes for something like a pipe or an early mechanism, that could be very helpful for the team. Still, I like the Jakiro pick. It gives them a fighting shot at slowing down this push. It also gives them a sturdy hero, like I said, so if they initiate... Razor, Razor is the final pick, huh? Usually when we see Razor picked, he's picked as sort of an anti-caster hero. Uh, the reason being that his passive will zap you anytime that you cast a spell. So against a hero like Lashrak, he can be very strong. Still, he requires a lot of farm. He's, he's not the tankiest hero, naturally. So you normally build very tanky on him, and if Lone Druid entangles you... I, I don't know about this pick, I have to say. It is something different from Dustbin. But I feel like maybe a Bounty Hunter would have been better if they wanted to go... I mean, Razor gives you some anti-push, and that's probably what they're thinking. But I, I'm just, I'm not sure, where is he going to farm? Alright, let's think about the lanes here for Dustbin. So we see a Morphling Earthshaker. We could see an offensive tri-lane, and a solo, a solo Razor, a solo Prophet. We could see... Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I'm not sure how Dustbin is going to lane this. Five Probably the Twin-Headed Dragon, the Earthshaker, and the Morphling tri-lane, and the Razor soloing, and the Prophet in the offlane. That's my best guess. But Prophet in the offlane against this many pushers from WE, he's not going to be able to slow down the push. So I'm not sure if you can really afford to do that. You're going to give up two quick towers top, if that's the case. And once those towers start dropping, heroes are going to start leaving bottom. Uh, and, you know, then we're going to see... Excuse me, not bottom, top. And then we're going to see that Lone Druid getting some more farm. It's going to be tough for Dustbin. There is so much push coming their way. They're really going to have to play this one well. They need the early ganks from the Prophet. Uh, the Morphling needs to get some nice early kills. Ninja Boogie will be playing that Prophet. So Arjun going to be on that hard carry role, which he does often play. He plays a mean Morphling. If you didn't catch Dustbin versus Ice yesterday, I believe it was game it was game number two. You definitely want to check that one out. Arjun was fantastic. I think he went 19-4 and four that game. and He was so active all game long. Really contributing to the team. We do have a bit of a pause here due to some lag, and let's see if it's calmed down at all. Looks like the pings are stable for the players. Good manners from Ninja Boogie. I certainly love to see that. So the question now is how is WE going to lane it? Looks like there will be a stout shield picked up on the Lone Druid off the bat. As well as some branches. Pretty standard build. Lone Druid is very squishy until he gets his ult. So you want to just get a couple extra sets. Is it going to be a Lone Druid solo mid? It looks like it might be. Yeah, we might see an offensive dual lane here with the Panda and the Shadow Demon. Lone Druid solo mid. It's going to be Lashrak as well as... Okay, defensive solo bottom Lashrak. Farming in that safe lane. Oh, Lashrak is going to struggle up against an Earthshaker Razor. And let's look at top. It's going to be a Jakiro, as well as a Morphling, up against the Brewmaster, paired up with a Shadow Demon. I'd say this lane is pretty even, but Morphling's going to get farm in this lane. He's definitely going to get farm. Ninja Boogie go. mid, up against that Lone Druid. Should be a pretty even lane, but you know, both heroes should get some farm. Lone Druid's generally not going to leave the lane to get runes. What he can do is send the bear to check the runes and deny them. Bear can pick up a lot of the runes himself. I'm actually not sure if he can pick up all of them. Uh, like Illusion Rune, for example. I'm not sure about that. But I know he can pick up things like DD and Haste. Uh, I don't know if DD actually works on the bear. I know Haste does. Either way, the bear can be used to help rune control. Prophet can TP to the runes. Chen, of course, will be jungling. It will be a defensive jungle Chen. And right off the bat, we do see... Is this a magic bush ward? I think it might be too far down. I'm not positive. It might be a little bit misplaced. So there, if, the, if that's the case, then this camp will be available. If not, it will be blocked off. Nice job here. This, this is a great ward if you're not already familiar with it. it allows you to see this rune also blocking off a jungle camp here. So Chen is going to have his jungle somewhat denied to start the game. Nice block here by Prophet, and you definitely want to get that lane control. Now Jaboogie, he's going to have a tough time last heading against the lone druid. But more, more importantly, he should be able to get that quick level 6 in this lane. Unless Chen ganks him. Little trick here by Lao. Nice little thing you can do. 
in the dot in the radiant jungle is you can actually get vigilance camp, control the creeps from here, farm it up, and then rotate around just a little bit more efficient. Yeah, Chan is gonna have to be very careful in this bottom lane. It looks like he was pulled a set of tangos by one of his supports. We often see this for heroes like anti mage and morphling. It's not quite as common for Lashrek. I think the potential for Dustbin to get kills early on is a bit higher. Warflame, you're just not going to kill him early game. Shakira is so tanky. Prophet is probably the, the most no. vulnerable hero, especially if Chen ganks. This Lashrak is very squishy. He could be ganked off. They're going to make a go now. Chan will have trouble. Early TP in from Ninja Boogie, and this is a dead Lashrak. The only question, it should be a dead Lashrak. And in fact, it will be a dead Lashrak. The Splitter is going to hit. First blood going their way. No south. He couldn't salve up in time. I'm not sure if he's lagging. Still, they get the first blood. This does force the Prophet off that lane, but with the early kill, will Ninja Boogie stay? Will they switch the lanes? Maybe we'll see Razor go mid instead. I don't think so. Ninja Boogie probably just gonna wait for that teleport to pull down. This does free up middle lane. A bit of a blunder there by Dustbin. They did not have to give away that kill. Nonetheless, getting first blood after the way last game went, that's a much better start for Dustbin. And this Lashrak, he is very squishy. He's very easily ganked off. A single Fissure, a, a Prophet TP, and they can keep on doing that. There's no reason to even stop. Up top, let's take a look. How does our Morphling farming? 3-1 and one to start. Panda, 6-4. and four. Panda does have the better base damage at this stage of the game, and a bit of better animation. Oh, again, the Prophet comes in. As soon as you look away, Ninja Boogie's there, and this time there's no counter kill. Double damage picked up. Salve has popped early on. Actually, I believe that was an allied Salve. He's going to TP back to base. What will he buy? Maybe an early urn here. Actually, no, early boots. Okay, so we're just going to see the boots. Just an extra, extra bit of the mobility. Could easily chase down the Lashrak. I, I think they need to keep on picking on this Lashrak right now. If Chen comes to help, he can be caught out by that Fissure and brought down. So it's not easy for Lao to assist his ally here. Still, they are getting some farm low dirt. Already 10 and 12. He's denying a lot of creeps, but there's nobody in the lane, so those denies don't matter too much. 13 and 2 on this Razor. Getting a great start, even despite the 0-1 score. Oh, on the top lane. Icy Path hits on both. Icy is going to go down. Icy being hit by an Icy Path. And look at Ninja Boogie, how active he's been around the map. Joins the fight there. I don't actually think he was needed for the kill. But nonetheless, they'll take it. Yeah, that Icy Path plus the, the Nuke, the Dual Breath, Dyer's and the Waveform. That's so much burst damage. Attack. So much AoE lockdown. Great job there by both players. And already, this looks like a completely different game for Dustbin. You can see what happens when they get their signature heroes, like the Morphling, the Earthshaker, and the Prophet. Aggressive heroes, you can really make a difference early on. Dustbin are just not accustomed to playing passively. When they do, they struggle. When they're up against strong early lines, they struggle. Oh, uh, Chown is in a bit of trouble here, but he'll be okay. Will he, though? Ninja Boogie joins the party. He actually doesn't have a single point treants yet, but they're not gonna need it. Chown going down again. They are just murdering this Lashrak, butchering him, in fact. This forces Icy to join the fight, and in fact, Icy will pay. Nice defensive disruption. They may get the kill. It's hard to say. Oh, Ninja Boogie, don't tank the tower when you have that Soul Catcher on you. Icy is gonna live, but still... They force the TPO, and look how aggressive the, the aggression continues up top. The clap actually hitting. I can't believe that clap hit. In comes Lashrak again. Chen has joined the party. They do get a double kill on this Chen. Lei, will they get the triple? It is going to be a triple. Despot is really overextended. As soon as that defensive disruption came out, they needed to run away. At this stage of the game, Lashrak can insta instantly TP back in. Uh, of course, you always have to worry about Chen. And with those kills, Chen is already hitting level 5. What an important counter counter gank there coming out from WE, who looked to be immediately way on the back foot. But still, Ninja Boogie, actually, he's only level 4 because he's been sharing that experience. And all this time, they've been giving, giving low druid the farm. Some dramatic swings early in this game. That is actually not a magic bush for it. It does have to be placed a bit farther up. I believe it's like right here. So they're not gonna be able to block this camp and hey Chen, getting those extra creeps could have made the difference. Earthshaker is rotated away towards the bottom lane. Razor is still having a pretty good time. He's level five. Early Wraith Band picked up as well, boots of speed. Razor is a very momentum based hero, so getting these cheap items is the way to go. At most you'll maybe see Razor save for Vitality Booster. A point boost or something like that. Maybe even an Ogre Club. 
or Ogre X. But beyond that, it's just... He's just, he's not a late game carry, so you're, you know, maybe you'll see a Reign of Health into a Hood. But he's never going to go for hard damage items or Lincoln Sphere, items like that. Razor just doesn't scale well enough. Warriors of the wood. Where are Lone Druid's items, actually? That's a good question. I think, has he been forced to buy regen? 32 and 22, and all he's got is a stout shield. Oh, the bottom lane. Chan in some trouble here. That Edict doing a lot of damage to Earthshaker. Will it be enough, though? Chan salves up. Good time to salve. I think he is still dead. But while this is happening, mid tower goes down to the lone druid. Oh, the sprout as well. Chan, no tangles on him. He can't actually eat his way out here. Oh, one more right click will do it. They get the kill, but they give up a mid tower to the lone druid, who suddenly has a thousand gold in the bank. On the top lane, disruption to start. Do we have any follow up? No. Looks like Arjun should be okay. But now it's going to be another push. Out. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, wave form out from Arjun. Chen with the nuke, almost enough. The haste is popped by the Morphling. He went for the early bottle. I do like that choice. It just offers you all the profit all bouncing through. But already, WE are pretty tanky. Brewmaster naturally tanky. Chen getting a quick level 6. He's got that old Shadow Demon defensive disruption. Arjun, of course, can haste right out. Will he go in for a couple more right clicks is the question. No, I don't think he can. Here comes the low droid. Phase boots are picked up. I'm not sure where those were. Maybe they were on the ground or something. And will nice fissure on two heroes. Phase boots on the bear would probably mean a kill at this point. Oh, he's gonna pop the ultimate. Fight going the other way. In comes the prophet with the sprout as well. Chan. No, the sprout onto one hero. They want one more right click. They're gonna get it. Uh, will Lone Druid survive? He Britain, he micros back the bear. He does have the phase boots to pop, but around comes our shaker from the back lines. A couple more right clicks will do the trick. And low druid goes down. Despite getting that early tower, he dies again. Not again, but he dies, and that's going to allow them to go for this push on the bottom tower. Bottom tower the pushers have become the pushies here. Tower is going to take a bunch of damage. Middle tower, is under attack. tower is going to drop early on, so tower is being traded left and right. And if you're up against such a strong pushing lineup with the Lone Druid, uh, the Edict from the... the, the the Shrak and of course all the Chen creeps. You gotta be happy to be trading evenly. Now losing a mid tier 1 is a bit more important than losing a bottom tier 1, but nonetheless it's a pretty even trade. Dustbin will be happy about that. Uh, Arjun actually getting a bit out late here. On the bottom lane, Chan gonna go down again. Chan is just getting caught out of position time after time. It seems like Dustbin may have found that squishy here to focus on while this is happening. Nice lane war being placed by Lao and Morphling goes down on the top lane. Immediate paints coming out. I believe they know this ward is here. Expect to see it dewarded soon. Not going to matter too much if the tower goes down, but for now the tower appears to Radiance be safe. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Lone Druid with the early phase boots ha ha has the opportunity here to go for relic if he wants to do so. He's going to pop the ultimate form. In that last engagement, he popped his ult a bit late, and the way it works when you pop your ult, if you t let's say you take 300 damage in your range form and you have 700 health total. When you go into the ult form, you have 1,200 total, you're only going to have about half your HP, so it does it is a percentage-based difference. Uh, so as a result, pop the ult form late can really make a difference. Icy, nice tree blocking! Look at that tree micro, micro from Ninja Boogie, and in fact, it's too good. Lay as well, nice play by him. They get another kill on these squishy supports. They're just being abused right now. Chan as well as Icy. 2 and 6 on Chan, 0 oh and 2 on Icy. Now you expect this from that support Shadow Demon. You don't expect to see it from that Lashrak, but maybe you do because of the way they laid it. Lashrak is so squishy that against the Prophet and Earthshaker, a Razor, these are heroes that can really punish that Lashrak for being alone. Mid tower takes a bunch of damage. While that's happening, Chen gets another kill coming in from the rear. They're not done just yet. Ninja Boogie taking a lot of damage. Could eat defensive Sprout and TP out. Maybe we'll see that. No, he's gonna pop the ultimate. He's looking to create up those Chen creeps. Oh, Chen gets so low. The ult is forced, but he is gonna live. Still, he killed two off, killed off two of the Chen creeps, and that is a very important thing to do this early on. That means it's gonna be at least a minute before Chen can replenish his army. Actually, a bit over a minute if he's out of creeps. While this is all happening, Lone Druid is farming away. He's on track for a, re a relic in the next five, six minutes if he doesn't die. Morphling 800 gold to his name. Rate of Aquila picked up. Going for those very early stat items. This is not a game where you can go for late game farm. You need to be able to contribute around the 20 minute mark because that's when WE's push will be coming. Whether it's on the back of a Radiance or just simply an early hood, a pipe, maybe a mechanism on the Chen. And speaking of that mechanism, it is coming soon.
on the top lane. Morphling is taking some harassment. Being driven back a bit. Panda has finally managed to collect level 6. It looks like it will be a blink dagger rush again for this panda, but it's going to be a much later blink because they're not... He's not getting that track bonus gold. They're not getting as many early towers. As I say that, this tower is looking to be in a lot of trouble. Razor's gone for early phase boots. Just giving him that mobility. On Razor, he's all about chasing. You want to stay next to enemy here so you can drain their damage from that static lake. You also want the mobility to just sort of be able to kite in and out of fights. Making sure your ult is heavy, everyone. FNTY deep in. Oh, Clap only hitting on one. He really wanted to hit on both. They do get the tower, though, and WE is going to back off. Not feeling as confident as they did last game. The hero to focus on right now is Chan. If you're Dustbin, you have to continue to gank this track. Because frankly, he's the only hero to kill, and he continues to be off on his own. Prophet ult bounces in, TP in. No tank. Actually, there is a tango this time, but it's just not going to matter, I don't think. One more right. The ninja boogie is on a killing spree. 4, 1, and 6. They've had 10 kills, and he's been involved in every single kill. Ninja Boogie is the key player for Dustman, and this time around, he's showing you guys why. Having a fantastic start, but nonetheless, WE is still looking to be in position. If they want to go for that mid-game timing push, they're getting close to the core items they need to do it. The Radiance up on the Scylla Bear. Uh, we could see it in the next five minutes or so. Brewmaster, the Blink Dagger, is going to be up in the next three or four minutes, maybe even sooner, maybe more like two or three. Chen Mechanism. I'd say they need one or two more... Two more items beyond that, maybe a drums or a Vlad's, as well as a pipe. The Dyer have a lot of nuke damage. Assault Karas, probably not. It is an item you see on Lone Druid, but I don't think this is a game where you want to go too, too late, because Razor, a decent semi carry. Prophet, a decent semi carry. And of course, that Morphling as well. A very strong late game carry. So if you wait to farm up something like a, uh, an Assault Karas, it may just be too late. Three creeps picked up here for Lau. Oh, Ninja Boogie, you don't want to be there. The net not in range. It is just a bit out. Sense are not able to catch up, even with that move speed aura. Ninja Boogie appears to be going for a quick Aghanims here. And I'm not sure about this choice. I feel like maybe a Necro Book or a Hex Rush or even a Utility item like a Mechanism might be the way to go. The reason for this is W have so much healing that the Prophet Ult is somewhat less useful than it normally would be. They already have the, the mechanism to heal up on the Chen. So even if the Prophet Ult does a bunch of damage, it can easily be countered. The tower goes down mid. Still, this Prophet Ult will allow you to split push, and split pushing is what Dustman wants to be doing for the next 5-10 minutes at least, until they can get some basic items up. Direct engagements against the Panda, against the Lone Druid, who is really amping up his farm. Every time I check this, I look away for a minute or two, he's got another 600 gold. This is the power of a Lone Druid, even though he had a bit of a slow start. Already up to 78 creeps, he is leading the board, despite that one death. And he's getting very close to that relic. This is still within that timing window that you look for on a lone druid. Have your relic up around 14, 15 minutes. Have your radiance up anywhere between 17 to 20 minutes. And then from there, go for the timing push. So the clock is ticking, and the clock is ticking for Dustbin right now, despite their great start. They gave away a lot of powerful heroes. Heroes that the Chinese really know how to play effectively. And they can't make mistakes. They really can't. One or two misplays are going to give up all of your outer towers, as well as possibly a Roshan. And if you give an Aegis away to the Lone Druid, you're probably just going to lose this game. So for Dustbin, it is a bit of a tightrope walk here. Still, they have the, pu the split push, the mobility to be able to do it. I wouldn't mind seeing Ninja Boogie still go for something like a Necro Book. Even though he's picked up the Point Booster, Point Booster is a very cost-effective item. Gives you a lot of extra HP, a lot of extra mana to work with, keeping you alive, allowing you to be a little more sustainable. One thing WE is lacking for the moment is initiation, but as I say that, smoked in Panda with the Blink Dagger. They have not seen this Blink Dagger yet. Blinking, Clap forthcoming. Actually, the Clap, where is it? The O in the back lines. Lay getting focused out. He did need a Soul Catcher. No Echo Slam. A lot of action here. Look how healthy everybody on WE is. That's the Chen's power. He has not even used the, actually he's used the mech and the ult. But they, it looks like they might get Blah, who even with the Vanguard, will he be able to tank up here? He's so low. It looks like they're surviving. In fact, they get the tower. Low Druid in trouble. This may be a big turnaround. Morphly with two kills. Will call it three. No, Earthshaker bought back. He echo slams to pick up that last hit. And FNTY now on the back foot. And W's push has been punished. They did overextend there. Chen heal, Chen ult. Just, just not enough.
Fissure as well. Down goes the panda. Triple kill for Arjun. Oh boy, oh boy. If you're a Dustbin fan, you gotta feel good right now. That was the kind of that was the kind of fight they really need. And now the Agonims comes up on Ninja Boogie. A great pickup for him. The mechanism will be up pretty soon. I expect to see Jakiro go for it at this time. I really want to see this go to three games because the, both these teams, I think they're fantastic. I wish we could see them both at the International. I really think they're underappreciated, underestimated by the community. But at the very least, if we get a game three, that'll be one last shot to see what they can bring to the table. A lot of people counted Dustbin out, said go home Dustbin. I was reading the chat in between the game and you guys might be eating your words. Still, you gotta give Ninja Boogie a lot of credit. He is just such a good player, such a strong ganking player. Giving him a hero like Profit or Invoker, a hero that can really dominate the early to mid game. He just goes berserk. I mean, every time I've seen him play one of those two heroes, he ends up being involved in like 80% of his team's kills and really paving the way for them to have a shot. Whenever, whenever Dustbin loses a game, Ninja Boogie doesn't play well. I mean, the only way they win is when he has a good start. It is still a team game. I'm not trying to take anything away from everyone else at Dustbin, but as the captain and as that primary ganker, one of the core farmers for the team, there's a lot of pressure on you to perform. Especially when you're on the brink of elimination, the brink of being sent home from the tournament, of losing that opportunity to fight for the slot. In spite of all these things going well for Dustbin, WE, the Relic is up on the Syllabair, getting close to that Radiance. It is still going to be a very timely Radiance. Not the fastest in the world, but definitely not uh, not too late. It's within that window of opportunity. The concern here for W is Lashrak was supposed to be one of your core farmers, one of your core pushers. It's a hero you want to have in the front lines, maybe with a quick drums, point booster, vitality booster, something like that, or just rushing for the BKB. We're going to see him pick up a point booster here. Just trying to tank up, but at this point, I mean, that's just not enough. He can still be burst down. Looks like it will be a four staff rush here for the, the Earthshaker. It does have that easier build up compared to a Blink Dagger, and in this game, every little diff every little uh, advantage in terms of build up, you can't really count on holding on to your gold. There's been so much action. 21 kills in 18 minutes. If you hold on to that gold, you may just end up losing to a death, especially with the Earthshaker being forced to buy back earlier. It's not going to be a mechanism, actually. They go for the early urn. I'm not sure I like that because the ganking stage of this game is about to be over. Aegis on Blah. Are they actually going to make a go on him? No, the Prophet all bounces through and he's a bit too tanky. And Tangle on the Blah. Lone Druid really wants to go for this, but the team does not agree. They're going to back off. The split push continues for Dustbin. This is how they love to play the game in the mid game. Prophet pushing one lane. Morphling just seen pushing top. Speaking of that Morphling, he's going to go for a BKB rush of his own. I believe this is the correct choice. Definitely would not like to see a Lincoln Spirit, just not the game for it, because you're not going to get to farm for 20 minutes after picking up that Lincoln's. You might get 5 minutes to farm out of it, if that. It's also much more expensive. And you need to be able to sit in the front lines. Everyone on WE needs to be able to sit in the front lines. Still, Entangle goes through that BKB. Oh, they're going to go for Lau here. Will they get the pick up? Icy Path hits Echo Slip, but in comes the defensive disruption. They might be able to bring him down. Where's the Prophet ult? Is it on cooldown? It is on cooldown. In fact, Hachiko is overextended. The Ro Radiance is up on low Druid, and that's going to force away a couple of heroes. The Aegis goes down Razor. I can't believe he went onto the high ground. Dustin are basically throwing away a big lead here if the Bla if Blah dies again. He is going to be able to get away. He is quite tanky at this point, having picked up an ultimate orb as well. Very farmed Razor. Fissure needs to be perfect. No, he's not going to get a good Fissure off. Oh, and Blah might go down now with that bear. Holding him in place, holding him in place. Not even needing to hold him in place, just the boulder toss. I really don't know why Dustbin went for that engagement. Sure, they, they might have had a slight lead, but all WE need are one or good, two good fights, and their push power will be enough to just go for all the outer towers. You really want to knock down these outer towers if you're WE in the next five minutes or so. But getting a couple of kills is the way to do that. You also threw away an Aegis. Radiant's still chasing Lei, but he should be okay. So for W, has there been any other item progression? Looks like really nothing so far. Panda going to be going for what looked to be, it'll probably be a pair of power treads. Could be a necro book, but I doubt we're going to see that. Just because Panda is probably not going to get that amount of farm. 
At least not in a timely fashion. Aside from that, no item pickups for WE. For Dustbin, it looks like it will be a Mantis style, and Mantis style is a great thing to have against the Lone Druid, uh, who is extremely slow at the moment. No phase boots on the hero anymore. But yeah, Mantis style is really nice versus the Lone Druid because you can Manta out of... Uh, it gives you a way to remove Entangle. You can Manta out of that. You can also BKB out of it. So with the BKB up on the Morphling, the Manta are going to be up on the Razor. They'll have some answers for that Entangle, but Entangle can... It can proc a bunch of times in a row. It's only a one-shot deal there. DD picked up on the Morphling, as well as a BKB. Will WE actually defend this push? I don't know if they can. Panda ult still cooling down. 70 Radiant seconds to go. Actually, this may be a window for Dustbane to go for high ground here. Against that bear, it's going to be tough. But they have a, a decent number of semi-carries who can burst that bear down. A lot of physical damage on their side. Uh, the bear is not really that tanky right now. There's no Vlad's up. There's no Assault Curse up. There's no pipe up to help keep it alive, but no, it looks like they'll take the tier 2. Are they going to continue? They really want to end this game. I don't feel that this is an urgent need to do so. No, they're going to back off, and I think this is the correct choice. Ninja Boogie, 3,500 gold in the bank. A quick Aghanims, as well as his high kill involvement. Has he still been involved in every kill? Nah, he's slipping. Ninja Boogie is slipping. Only 4, 1, and 8. Smoke gang coming in here from WE. It is Lashrak. Yep, he went for the point boost, the vitality booster. Just the raw stats, the raw HP. Every little bit helps against Dustbin's burst damage. If you can stay alive long enough, then Chen can heal you up. Uh, Panda can help save you with his initiation. WE have great vision right now. They have this ward up. They know the enemy is in their jungle. Are they going to find it? What is the question? Panda looking to go and getting blocked out by the Treants there. Nice defensive fissure. Lay not going to be entangled, but the Demonic Purge coming through. Not going to drop the Echo before he dies. And a huge fight is going to break out. Panda ult is up now. And it looks like one by one, Dustbin are getting caught off, picked out. Uh, there's no Replicant here. Morphly cannot join the fight. Prophet is going to immediately TP away. Ninja Boogie knows the fight is lost. And they're just going to start split pushing. But even with the team fight won, this is where the Aghanims on the Prophet and the split pushing power of the Morphine really kick it into second gear. They could just continue to split push. They don't have to take a direct fight, and WE, despite winning a fight, picking off those supports, it's really not enough. They have to kill the Prophet and maybe maybe the Morphine, at least one of those two, to have any chance at getting the lane e creep equilibrium going in their direction. In terms of item progression, what is the Silver going for? It looks like he's gone back for an Orb of Venom. Normally you see this as an early pickup. Oh, the Radiant Spare chasing that Morphling, but Morphling is so tanky. And he should be just fine. Yeah, for Lone Druid, it's 1800 gold in the bank. I think you need a pipe in this game. I, I don't think you can go straight for an Assault Kuras. Gem picked up on WE. We see a lot of the Chinese teams doing this. When they have a lead, but even when they're on the defensive, it really helps with counter warding. Uh, maintaining every semblance of map control is very important. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see what WE can do, but I feel like if Dustbin just slow roll this, keep on getting the farm up, they're in position uh, to take this game. They have the better late game. The Morphling is going for, uh, looks like a Manta of his own. Manta is picked up. On that Razor, they don't have Prophet, but he can join anytime. They're going for the burst down on Panda. No ultimate on him. Sprout onto the high ground. He blinks out. What a blink. BKB is popped on the Morphling. He's still taking a lot of damage from that bear. Will Icy go down? He's got the... Oh, he looks like he will. One more right click does the trick. They did force a 10 second BKB, but Lao getting caught up. And Gem gets dropped. Dustbin, a couple of key kills. No Panda ultimate still for a while. 55 seconds to go on that, and Blau goes going on the high ground. He smells blood in the water. He wants Chan. The split are not going to hit. Look how much damage that Edict is doing. Pulse Nova, too much. No BKB on the Shrek. He's not able to tank it. And while Manta is a decent choice, I think BKB would have been the slightly stronger one, especially the double BKB. Still, they get a couple of key kills on those support heroes. They're going to go for high ground. I doubt we'll see them getting the tower, but even just doing some damage to it. All the lanes pushing and thanks to that Prophet. Oh, adapt to strike onto the bear. 
Just trying to avoid a bit of entangle harassment. Oh, Hachiko. Hachiko. Oh, what a fissure. What a fissure. Lei is on top of his game. He is one of the best Earthshakers in Asia. Really strong play by him. Saving his team time after time this game. He may not have the highest kill score when this game ends, but if he keeps on hitting fissures like that, Dustin may have what it takes to go to game three. Prophet is getting close to a hex. That hex is going to be really helpful. You can hex the bear. It's going to allow your teams to escape. You can also hex that Chen. If you can get burst the Chen down before he can drop the ultimate, before he can drop the mechanism, or the panda before he gets into ult form, that's really going to help. And look how defensively this panda is being played compared to last game. He's not going for phase boots. He's not going for a quick agonims or anything like that. He's just being forced to stack HP. Only level 10. The XP graph hugely in favor of the Dire. Well, actually, at this point, it's not that big of a difference. Uh, but a lot of that XP is concentrated in the hands of the Silibear. His teammates are lagging quite far behind. Level 8 Shadow Demon. Compare that to Dustin. They've got all three semi-carries sitting right around the 15 to level uh, 14 to 15 mark. And Prophet is getting close to that level 3 ultimate. Once he has the level 3 ult, it gets a, a one-minute cooldown, and it's going to be that much harder for, Dust for W to push out. Arjun continue to do some farming. He's still working towards that, that Manta style. If he can get up a Manta style, I feel like that's enough damage to just outright click anything W can throw the way. As well as damage down the bear. Roshan response. They immediately transition to the pit. I believe the rotation will be spotted here. Uh, when you see the Razor rotating towards the pit, as well as all the heroes missing, you have an inkling of what's going on, but having an inkling is one thing. Trying to stop it is another. Will Lone Druid try to send it as bear to steal this Aegis? It doesn't look like he will. Yeah, WE know the Roshan's happy, but they're just going to give it away. There's just nothing they can do. The lanes are being pushed too far in their direction. The only lane that's pushed in is top, and that's not important for Roshan. The creep equilibrium heavily in favor. Roshan has fallen to the dial. Heavily, heavily in favor of Dustbin. I just saw someone ask in chat, can you replicate the bear? No, you can only replicate heroes, but... If the Silibear later on in the game puts the Radiance onto his own hero, then you can get a Radiance of your own. A very tanky lone druid of your own with that high base armor, that high HP, so... It kind of forces your hand to, in terms of keeping the Radiance on the Spirit Bear, which is fairly squishy. Speaking of... I mean, as far as Spirit Bears go, don't get me wrong, it's still got over 2k HP, but... You know, against Dustbin's right-click power, being a bit under farmed on that Silibear, they have a decent shot. Where is the Spirit Bear anyway? Can't find it on the map. Okay, here we go. It is going to be an Assault Caress. He's getting close. He's getting pretty close. They want to make a go on bottom, but it looks like Blah is aware. And they continue to give the Aegis to Blah. I prefer this choice. I just don't like it. I don't like how aggressively he used it last time. But I like giving it to him because Razor is going to be easier to bring down than Morphling. He has no escape mechanism. He has no BKB, which is more reliable defensively than a Manta style. So by giving this Razor the, Razor the Aegis, you ensure that... Pretty much all of your semi-carries will be alive for a long time in the fight. And look what Dustbin is doing. This is how you play against a push lineup. When you have hard carries and your split pushing power of your own. It's just pushing those side lanes. They may get the tier 2 bottom. I don't even know if they're going to. Looks like they want to make it go mid. Blink and clap on two heroes. Hachiko in a lot of trouble. He gets burst down immediately. Will he get burst down? Yeah, he does finally go down. Lay being driven back. Boulder toss to follow. Arjun is in the fight with that BKB. Prophet is going for racks while this is happening. But let's keep on focusing on the kills because that is the... Uh, a little bit more exciting to watch. Yeah, the third, tier 3 tower is going to go down. They only get the Loge, the twin-headed dragon. That's not a good trade for a panda ult. With that panda ult down, low druid comes in. Arjun replicates back. What play by Arjun? The hex onto the low druid. The pings frantically being spammed. Will they be able to bring this low druid down? One more wave for him. He's getting GG. He's getting very low. The adaptive strike as well. Prophet dies. Oh, he does go down. The Prophet ultimate bouncing through. A big kill. That's going to delay that assault caress. And Prophet is right back up top. For WE, did they have, did they all have TPs? I guess they were low, they just went to the fountain. Sprout onto Chan, he's being kited a little bit. Hex cooling down in 5-6 seconds or so. Blink in, initiation from Arjun, no mana for that Manta style, no mana for anything right now. Ninja Boogie might die twice. This could be a huge loss, he is overextended. A big overextension, he's dead for a full minute. Still, they have the Aegis on the Razor. The Morphling survives, and I believe the Morphling... No, he doesn't have buyback, he went for the Manta style, so no buyback on him. <laughs> 
But because Prophet got his ult off, they should be able to keep the lanes push. So it was an overextension, but they did get the tier 3. And exposed tier 3 at this stage of the game means these ranks are sitting ducks for that split push. With Prophet Aghanims, you are very likely to have creeps in the base. And if you have creeps attacking any of these tier 3 towers, mid, top, or bottom, you can immediately start backdooring the top racks, and they will not have backdoor protection. This is one of the numbers you want to keep an eye on. Three and a half second cooldown on that glyph. So they're going to have about three minutes once the Prophet respawns to try and set up some... to try and set up some backdoor antics, or to just go for a push if they want to. It looks like it could be an Assault Caress from the Razor. It could be a Mean Honor, but I think the Assault Caress is the better pickup here. Because you're up against that Lone Druid, you can see his bear is going for an Assault Caress of its own. And tanking up is really going to help you survive. The physical damage is what's doing most of the work in these team fights. At this stage of the game, they can kite the Lashrac. Unless you see the Razor out of position again, diving the base, they don't really have to worry about tanking too much of his nukes. Uh, and of course, the BKB on the Morphling. The sheer mobility of the Razor, they should be able to stay out of range of that Pulse Nova for the most part. And as a result, it's really only the Spirit Bear, as well as the right clicks of the Pandas, that would be the primary concern for WE. Or for Dustbin. All the wards die, and with Lao going down in one of these early engagements, they did lose a gem, so no counter warding for WE. The map control is limited for them. If we take a look at the Radiant Fog of War, look how little they see. Being forced to place this defensive lane ward, which just died. All they see is this, this little segment of the map, maybe 20-30%. If you compare that to Dustbin, they see a lot more. They're seeing almost the exact opposite. All of this area in here, they're having some vision of those regions of the lands. The push is commencing up top. We're going to see a huge engagement momentarily, ladies and gentlemen. Get excited because if Dustbin go for this and they lose this fight, WE can turn around and storm down middle lane. If Dustbin are able to take Rax, they've got the better late game. Icy Path not going to hit. Morphling pops the Mantis though, not going to save it to... Oh, Blink and Clack. There is an ult up, but BKB is popped by Arjun. They're not going to burst down this panda. Not even interested. They're just right-clicking the racks. The Demonic Purge going through the BKB. Really slowing down Arjun. Still, I don't think they're going to bring him down. FN2Y thinks about the Clack. But while this is all happening, Ninja Boogie with the split push. They're actually not going all in on the team fight here. Blood draining so much damage. Chan in a lot of trouble. The Fissure kind of working against Dustbin. The first bad Fissure I've really seen in this game. Mechanism is forced. And while this is all happening, the, the split continues. Lone Druid is on the bottom lane. Assault Caress picked up on the bear. Panda ult is dropped. He blinks back in. He wants to go for the fight, but immediate waveform out. And are they actually going to chase anyone down? No, they can just right click the pandas, the fire pandas. That there's a lot of damage gone. Lone Druid gets a picks up a much needed kill. Andre Kill Prophet has joined the fight. He's focusing on Chan. He, no hex, actually. I'm not sure where he used it. Gem sitting on the ground. Lane drops the echo. But in fact, it is Chan doing most of the damage. No BKB on Arjun, who gets burst down as well. Three kills going their way. But it is the Razor in the middle of this fight who's looking to pick up a counter kill. Three for three is the trade. Triple kill on the low Druid, who actually got four four heroes down on the dustbin side. Will Blob be able to get away? He's, is he going to pick up the gem? No, he's just running away from the slow Druid. No TP on Blob, but he's wasting valuable time here. Oh, Blob, a lot of trouble. He goes down too. Ultra kill for Lone Druid. Oh boy, does that bear hurt. Another overextension by Dustbin. They wanted to go for high ground, and I just I don't think that's the way to play this lineup. You should try and bait the panda ult and immediately back up the gem up on FNTY. This will give W a chance to push out the lanes. All hope is not lost, but Dustbin, they continue to force the issue. It's a huge goal lead, but I think you all need BKBs. Uh, the BKB, I mean, in that fight, Lashrak was doing so much damage, especially with the Soul Catcher. The Radiance Burn as well. The Clap even, uh, the decent amount of damage. They right-click down the Fire Panda. Also, another down, another issue for Dustbin in that engage, but they're very premature on the usage of the Manta style and the BKB. On the Morphling, as well as the Razor's Manta, these two heroes need to be, these two players need to be a lot more selective as far as when they pop them. Ninja Boogie is just going to spam his ult as soon as he gets vision of all three lanes. and That's the way to play Prophet at this stage of the game. When you're running this split pushing lineup, nice pick off there by Ninja Boogie. He catches out the Shadow Demon. He's going to TP out immediately. Really nice map awareness. And this is the power of placing a hill ward here. Whenever you have a strong pushing lineup, if you place a ward here, as well as a ward on the high ground over here, you have vision of 
pretty much everything in this area. It makes it very difficult for the enemy to leave their base without smokes. Razor at this point, I think Dustbin just cannot take a fight until that assault occurs. If the bear, it just hits too hard. It's not even about having the the damage that the assault curse can give you with that minus armor or it's about the plus armor for your teammates. You got to do you, you just need every little bit of defensive firepower to help keep you alive against the freight train that is that lone druid. You need a not just a brick wall but a, a triple reinforced titanium steel, adamantium, whatever material you want to go with. They need that to hold off the push and assault curse is a, a great <laughs> a great defensive uh, material to have in that wall. I'm trying here with the analogies, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. W has managed to place some wards, but again, against the Prophet, they just can't place the aggressive wards they want. If you're W, you'd love to have a ward up here. You'd love to have some wards towards the Roshan pit, which will be responding in the next minute and a half, maybe two minutes or so. A burning question in my mind is, is W, uh, and yeah, and we can see, they're just forced to place wards like this one. Any kind of vision they get. But the burning question right now is, will WE contest the next Roshan? It's going to be very hard to do it. If they're smoke ganging into Roshan, it's going to be obvious. And if they're not, Dustbin can just back off. Dustbin also have enough right-click damage at this point. They might be able to just end, end Roshan's life before the B can even get there. Between the Razor, especially if that Assault Curse is up by the time they go, as well as the Morphling, who can just morph to full, full agility and hit extremely hard. He's already hitting for almost 200 damage a click. Could easily add another 35 damage to that. And it's attack speed as well. Interesting item pickup here. He goes for a Ghost Scepter. So that's a free Ethereal Blade for the Morphling. Now he does have a Cloak to help mitigate some of that damage. But the Ghost Scepter kind of makes sense because you're probably not going to... You're not really dying to the nukes at this point. You're much more so dying just to the sustained damage of the Razor. Uh, of the Morphling and of the Prophet, with, especially when you get hexed up. If they can right-click you down with those Manta Illusions. That's the only way you're likely to die. I wonder if he'll go for an Ethereal Blade later on. <laughs> that would be an unusual build. They do have a lot of nuke damage, so... It could work with the Soul Catcher amplifying everything up. The little Shrack dealing out crazy amounts of damage. We'll have to wait and see, but Ninja Boogie is rotating to the pit, spamming that ult on cooldown. Invisibility. He actually did summon Trance because he dropped the ult, so they're not going to have the... Or no, the Trance weren't cooldown. Now he'll be able to drop them if he wants to. Will they give the Aegis to the Razor again? I think with the Assault Caress, he's still the correct target. It's going to come down to Arjun in the next fight. Don't waste that BKB because you don't have an Aegis to come back to life. Usually when you have a Morphe on your team, he does have that Aegis. Roshan has fallen to the But it will be a cheese. This is the third Roshan. The power of the Dyer really coming into play here. W are all smoked up. Not smoked to try and fight Roshan. But maybe smoked looking to set up a gank. I think they're hoping the Prophet's going to show up top, try to push out this lane. Maybe the Morphling will. They're baiting out the Lone Druid. If an Entangle can hit, they could definitely go a Demon Edge as well. This Lone Druid is absolutely massive. Pops the Ghost after TP's out. Will Dustbin go for another push, or are they going to continue to play the waiting game here? I still think you can just keep on farming. I mean, I know it's crazy to say against the Lone Druid, a Panda, and a Shrak, who are very strong late game heroes. But you have three excellent semi-carries, you have split push, and you're more likely to be able to get the pickoffs around the map because of your sheer mobility on your team. You also can continue to secure yourselves Agi, and hey, if you want to take this to a 50, 60, 70 minute game, you can even start stacking cheeses up on all your heroes. We saw in the Ehome vs. LGD game series, if you haven't watched that game already, check that game out. 90 minute game, Ehome got 9 Roshans, which I believe is 6 or 7 cheeses their way, as well as, of course, 9 Ag Agi. And, hey, I mean, if you can get an, a cheese onto every single hero, it keeps you... That much more survivable, giving you this extra life fight. But they're gonna get the initiation here on Ninja Boogie. Immediate TP out. Will the Centaur get in range to stop? No, disruption to start. While this is happening though, high ground has been breached and Chan will go down. No Lashrak in this fight, but back to top lane. Where it looks like Ninja Boogie is not able to escape. He has the buyback. Immediately he will buy back. And Dustman, will they be able to siege down these towers in time? Blah, he's still got the Aegis. The Assault Crust really helping him the, the push. Chan bought back. Will he die again? 
No, it looks like it'll be okay. Here comes the Panda ult. Everyone from Dustpin needs to run. The smoke is pop, but unfortunately, they have a gem up on one of these heroes. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'm pretty sure I saw a gem. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is no gem. But either way, the other... Or actually, it wouldn't matter anyway, because what am I talking about? There are heroes there anyway uh, on the enemy side. But it was a good thought there at the smoke. Disruption. Ninja Boogie. Will he go down again? He will. And Ninja Boogie... After such a great start, really playing sloppily, still BKB has popped an RJ, he gets entangled! He gets entangled! Oh, and he doesn't get away! No replicate to TP out to, but we're just not able to do so. Oh, another set of racks exposed, but it feels like Dustfin, they had the Aegis, the Aegis was not used. Aegis was not used. In spite of the fact that they keep on feeding these kills, Look at the gold on the lone druid now. Is he gonna go for a rapier? I doubt it. We'll probably see an MKB. Could see a crit. They don't have an Aegis to work with, which, which makes a rapier highly unlikely. But I always love to throw that possibility out there, just because <laughs> late game rapier. We saw it in uh, we saw it in Mouse vs. Birds Pro. Such an exciting thing, now. especially in the hands of Sing Sing. But really, any player, the drama factor goes up exponentially. Oh, they're not going to hit there on the icy path. The macro pyre being wasted. That is a fail macro pyre. You really want to combo that with the fissure. It's one of their best anti-push tool tools. And Vla is going to stay bottom for the moment. He does have a TP scroll. The bear is back, but the bear can only do Radiance Burn. Well, not actually being untangled, so no matter what, he will be able to TP out. Oh, the Prophet ult bouncing through, trying to slow down this push. They do get the tier 2. 42 minutes end of the game. A team with a low druid, a Chen, a Lashrak. They finally get a tier 2 tower. That just shows you how powerful the Agonims in the early levels really are on the Prophet. Speaking of that Prophet, d man just picked up. I wonder, is this the correct choice? I guess the main way he's dying is to that... It is to the Entangle, but it's still the Disruption as well. The Soul Catcher, the nuke damage from the Lashrak. This is doing a lot. Dustbin, it's, they're just going to keep on throwing heroes... Illusions, uh, every an Aegei, every extra unit, extra, every extra life buyback they have, they're just going to throw them at your racks over and over and hope to eventually bring them down. I feel like Dustbin has basically given up on the idea of taking a team fight, and it, it makes sense. They don't really have the greatest team fight. They have an Earthshaker, but it's only an Earthshaker with a four staff. Speaking of that Earthshaker, haven't looked at his items at all this game. Finally, uh, getting close to a Blink Dagger. Brewmaster Ultimate Orb picked up. I believe this will be a late game hex. The Chinese love them and. It's a great choice. Extra disables are going to be so helpful to prevent the TPs out from you know the split push, as well as give you that extra form of initiation. The bear has an MKB. The bear is just a beast right now. This is going to discourage any butterfly pickups. And they do have two agility carries who could go for butterfly. Morphling City of 4200 gold. His buyback is ready. It costs 1300 The reliable gold, 1340 So he could spend all of this gold. He could get a big item. Like a Demon Edge. He's close to an Eagle Song if he wants it. There's no BKBs on the Dire. Or on the Radiant at all. So I, even at this late stage, I think Shotgun Morphling would be very effective. Very potent. Also, if the Bear can't right-click you, that's going to be very helpful. We do have a bit of a pause here. Reason for the pause has not been given yet, but hopefully it will, so will be soon. Oh, Cafe is having technical problems. Alright, I'm going to run to the bathroom while we have this brief break, but we'll be back with the rest of the game soon. Middle tower is under There's the unpause and 
I heard middle tower under tech. Oh, the tier 3 is maybe going to go down here. W smoked up. They want to go for initiation onto this Morphle who does a buyback. So even if they kill him, it's not the biggest deal. And they'll replicate out. This is what's so frustrating about trying to gank a late game Morphling, even a mid game Morphling, is he can just be, he can instantly leave and there goes your gank. And while this is all happening, look how low the tower is. They're all going to have to hoof it back to base. Oh, for WE, it's looking, it's looking like they're just going to slowly get uh, outmaneuvered in this late game stage. Even when they win fights, it's just, they don't win them convincingly enough and the power of buyback. So many people have clamored for it to be nerfed in the past and Ice Rock has made some changes, increasing the cooldown on buyback. But in the end, buyback might be the difference here. BKB is popped, there's no glyph, they get the free melee racks immediately out. The Morphly will go, Demonic Purge coming in. They really want to take this fight. Morphlade, I, did he replicate out again? I believe he did, and so, so many jukes here by Arjun, who's really played well in the late game. Sage is Blah going to start backdooring bottom, perhaps? No, he can't. He's going to back off. I have Dustbin just keep on doing that. They can eventually whittle down these towers. The Glyph, yeah, you can use it once. You might stop one attempt, but you can't stop them all. It's looking like we're... Uh, as long as Dustbin don't make any crucial mistakes here, they should be able to take this game. They have the positioning, they have the gold advantage, they have the experience advantage, they have the mobility advantage. In late game, mobility is king. Oh, we do see Shakiro go down. Not the biggest hero in the world to lose, but hey, you don't want to be freeding that Lone Druid anymore. 2100 additional gold. Lone Druid is one of the best late game carries. If the game goes long enough, theoretically he can get up to 12 huge items. 6 on the bear, 6 on the hero. That being said, he is still easily kited. Uh, this is all theory crafting, but, you know, maybe the slow jury can get big enough to outcarry the, the triumvirate that I've been heaping praise upon all game long. <laughs> Only time will tell. Ninja Boogie, if he wants to go for that MKB, he's got it now, but of course buyback is the first thief to save for. Yeah, it is just this, this, sort of this cone, this this area of the map that WE's movement is restricted to. If they go any farther, the dustbin will just start backdooring. They'll start pushing in the other lanes. They'll start getting those pickoffs. Speaking of pickoffs, Earthshaker maybe in a bit of trouble here. Panda had the clap, didn't go in. Earthshaker is a pretty important here to pick off. It's not going to win you the game, but you know it, he's most of the lockdown here. And speaking of lockdown, I have Skatey picked up on the morph lane. A very big item, and no buyback on Arjun. This is a risky maneuver here. Very, very risky. But hey, Dustbin has always been a team that likes to take risks. W is going to make a go here on the bottom. Are they actually, this is actually a fight they want to take. Nice fissure block to start. Look how fast FNTY is dropping. Great echo slam. He goes down. Disruption onto the Chan, onto Chan defensively. The pipe is popped, but the fissure really helping out here. In comes that bear, and that is one of the biggest bears we'll ever see. Eagle Horn is picked up on Razor, but no butterfly just yet. Bla is running for his life. Will he be able to escape? Mechanism is popped. He's entangled. He's held in place. He's still got the Aegis, though. Even if he dies, he will come back to life. Arjun has joined the fray, and it looks like Dustbin are going to take this fight. The bear is being kited. That's why the Eye of Scotty was picked up. Bear gets brought down once. Bear is resummoned, but the bear is just point the game. Even though it hits so hard, it is quite squishy. Disruption. Icy is going to TP out. He will get away. No, he won't. Razor doing too much damage. Hex up. Ice. JJ goes down. Immediate buyback from him. But I'm not sure if it's going to matter. I don't think it will. Everyone on Dustbin is alive. They all have buyback. They can just brute force their way into a second, a third set of racks here. MKB has picked up a ninja buggy. He knows they're in a comfortable position. He TPs back to base. He'll be rejoining this fight any second now. And it looks like Dustbin are on the verge, the precipice of taking this to a game number three. Manta is popped. The Sprout on the GG. Will hit initiation from Earthshaker. He gets the... They've caught off the low Jordan again. The Ghost Scepter's popped, but that's not going to be enough to keep him alive. Or will it? Being slowed up by Morphlane. And it looks like Fancy will take the fall instead. Will they get GG into the fountain? He is driven by Jakiro, and it looks like... Oh, they are going to get the second set of eggs. The, off the offense of GG coming out from Ninja Boogie, but it's not really that offensive when you're up this many racks. With the, half of the enemy lineup dead, and the better late game. Three sets of racks go down. WE called the GG. Good matters from both teams. In the end, we're going to head to a game number three. Oh, I'm not sure I'm ready for this. I'm not sure I'm ready for it. But we're going to get it. This is only our first match of three of the day for the Eastern Qualifiers. And there will be some Western Qualifier action. Hopefully I'll be able to bring that to you guys as well. So we have much in store for us. 
What a fantastic start to the day. Dustfin coming back in style on the back of Ninja Boogie's fantastic profit play. Questionable decision by W giving away that profit. They did get a lot of heroes they liked, but ultimately it was that safe lane, Lashrak, who got no support. There was no Earthshaker there to keep him safe. And ultimately, Dustbin are able to just use their agility to their advantage in the late stages of the game. They 